Hey everybody, in this video we're going to discuss the path variable, P-A-T-H. This is something that gets everybody a bit confused when they're first starting working with the command line and installing new custom software and software development in general. And the good news is that once you wrap your head around it, it's actually pretty straightforward, right? So we're all familiar with simple commands on our command line like ls or make dir, right? Make dir temp or cd temp, for instance. Um, these are all just normal little commands on our machines that we have uh, been running and getting familiar with, if we're not already. And the, it seems like these commands are just built into our computer and they just work, right? But the reason that they work is, again, it's the path variable. So let's, real quick, let's just make a little script. Um, let's call it script.sh. And this is going to be real simple. It's just going to echo, um, I'm a script. And I'm going to make this executable and then test if it works. And it does, right? So I've just created this little script. And the only place I can call it is right here. So for instance, if I go into this temp directory that I just created previously, there's nothing in here. If I try to call that script file, it's not found, right? And because the computer will only look in the current directory for this script.sh and the script.sh is not in this directory. If I go up a directory, back to where I was, there's script.sh. So now it's dot slash to say right here in this directory, I wanna call this script and it works again. So when we put something on the path, it basically means I wanna be able to call this script from anywhere on my computer. And for example, a lot of the commands that we've been using, ls, pwd, mv, make dir, all of these things, those are just scripts that are already on our computer someplace. And in, on um, Mac and Linux, Unix Linux, most of them, many of them are in the slash bin directory. So if I go in there, here you'll see uh, sh, rm, pwd, uh, mv, ls, uh, cp is in here, chmod, echo, right? These are all just commands and you can, you can look at them, but there's not much to see in there. It's all this compiled mumbo jumbo, but it is a script uh, and it exists here in this bin directory. So for instance, right here, I could say, um, you know, ls like this, but what I'm doing is I'm actually calling the script in this directory by saying dot slash. And why does this ls command work no matter where I am on my computer? It's because this directory slash bin is on my system path. And I can demonstrate that by echoing the path variable, which is why the dollar signs in front of it to say variable. And here, here it is. This is my current path, right? And the the colons are the delimiters. So this is a direct, this is a path. Inside this path, there's a bunch of executables. This is a path. This is a path. This is a path. And this is a path. And they're concatenated into what's called the path variable. And I just did air quotes. But because slash bin is on my system path, if I'm in some other directory, like let's say I'm back in this temp directory, there's no ls command here, but I can still run ls. Because if my system doesn't find the ls command in the current directory, it'll pull up the path variable and it'll search every one of these directories looking for that ls command. And it won't find it here. 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 But then here, in the bin directory, it does find it. So it executes that ls command and we get the results that we do. So oftentimes when we're installing new software, for instance, uh, MySQL is a time that it happens very frequently when people are getting started in our courses. We need to add the MySQL and or MySQL bin directory to our path so that we can call the MySQL command from anywhere, right? So if I wanna be able to log into MySQL by just calling the MySQL command, I need to put MySQL on the path. Um, and there's many, there, there, there can be a few different paths and there can be system paths, and user paths, etc. cetera. Um, you don't see MySQL on this path because this is my user path. And I believe I installed MySQL as a system path variable uh, just during the installation, uh, but you can disregard that. So how do I add something to my path? So for instance, let's say I wanna call this script from anywhere on my computer, right? So what I would do is I would CD into my home directory on a Mac or a Linux, and I'll, 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 I'll quickly demonstrate, not demonstrate, but show you how to do this on Windows as well. 
But I'm going to go into my home directory. And if I do ls-al, I'm going to see a Z -A -Z -S -R -Z -S -H -R -C file. Um, this can be also bash RC or bash profile, or uh, I think those are the main ones. Um, but this is basically my user, my user preferences, right? Or kind of if I want to set up specific things to my user profile. So if I take a look at this, I say vim.zshrc. Here you can see that I'm I'm modifying the path variable. So what I do is I say path equals whatever the path already is, right? We don't want to overwrite the existing path. We, so this that's why this dollar sign path is here. So it's basically like concatenating. I want the this local variable within the script that I've called path to equal dollar sign path, so whatever is already on the path plus this directory, right? And then we say export path. And let me go back to where I was so I can pull up that path. So I'll just do PWD. This is the path that I want to add to my path. Uh, and I'll, I'll just vim it from here. So vim tilde dot zshrc. And I'm just going to go to the end of this line. If, if you don't have this file, uh, just create it. Oftentimes, your system doesn't come with this file. So if you don't see a dot zshrc or a dot bash profile or a dot bash rc in your home directory, you can just create it. Um, and then I'm going to paste this in there. And I'm going to escape colon wq. So I've just added this to my path variable. After I do that, I have to do what's called sourcing. So I've got to source this file again, basically to get my computer to reload it. All right, so here I am. I'm going to just try calling it locally again. Still works. But now when I go, for instance, into my home directory, so I'm no longer in that directory, I'm just going to call script.sh, and it works. Holy moly. But that script.sh folder script is not in this directory. The reason I was able to call it is because I added the directory that contains that script to my path variable, right? And that really, that's really it. Um, so oftentimes when we install new uh, applications, for instance, MySQL or uh, Maven or Gradle, or, you know, there's a, the, every now and again, you'll just basically see, download it, put it wherever you want and add the bin directory to your path. Because in that bin directory, I think bin stands for binaries. That's where the executable files are that actually execute this command. So um, adding things to the path, quite uh, quite useful. One quick uh, fun thing that you can do while you're here. So vim.zshrc. Um, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to create an alias equal cd uh, tilde slash documents slash coding nomads slash languages. Um, And you got to give it a name. Another one that I like to do is moral support. So we can create another alias uh, support equals missing some quotes there. Let's see if that works. So if, now if I just type support, you got this. And if I type, um, uh, well, I don't, I shouldn't call this home. It's kind of misleading. Let's call it, um, let's just call it CN for coding nomads. Now I got to source it again so that the computer loads that file. Now I can go anywhere. I'll just say I'm in my home directory. And now if I type CN and hit enter, you can see that I've now moved into that directory that I just added as an alias. So that's just a quick side note. Another fun thing that you can do in the bash profile, bash RC or, or ZSHRC file. Um, sometimes you just need a little support and your computer telling you that you got this can be quite helpful. So adding things to the path, uh, really, really useful. You do it in your, if you're on a Mac, uh, you do it in the, it, in the .zshrc file, the newer Macs are now by default on ZSH. Uh, if you're on an older Mac, it's going to be in a in your home directory in a file called .bash underscore profile or .bash rc. And all we do is just create this path equal. Make sure that you concatenate on the existing path 
and then add the directory, for instance, to the bin directory of, of MySQL or Gradle or Maven or whatever it is that you're trying to install. And then if you want, you can add some aliases to kind of CD. So this alias is just a command, CD home slash document slash coding nomads slash languages. Um, so if you if you keep finding yourself like CDing and this is long command, and you're tired of typing it over and over again, create an alias, it'll take you right there. So CN, um, let's say I'll go, I'm gonna go to the root of the computer. So just verify that I'm at the root of my computer. If I type CN, boom, now I'm at this directory it's because I made a little alias. Uh, on Windows, I would just honestly Google it. It's, it's a little bit different. You have to use a graphical user interface. I just Windows add to path um, and this uh, this article is pretty good. Basically goes through all the various Windows uh, versions, but essentially in the search bar down on the bottom left, you're going to search for um, system control panel and then click advanced set system settings, then click on environment variables uh, in the section system variables, find the path environment variable and select it, then click edit. If the path variable does not exist, click new. In the edit system variable or new system variable window, specify the value of the path environment variable. So this would be the, the path, right? So for instance, uh, the path to the script or you know to the folder that contains um, the executables that you want to be on the path. Like this is oftentimes in the bin directory, for instance, in the MySQL installation or in the Maven or Gradle installation. And then click OK. Uh, and that looks a bit like this once you're in there. You've got user variables. So this is just for the given user that's logged in. You've also got system variables that will work for any user, but and they both typically have a path and you can you can do one or the other uh, or both, but you would just click on this path variable, click edit. And then once that pops up, you'll see all these lines that you can add in and you'll just add the path to, um, you know, to the given directory that you that contains the the executables for the application that you're trying to install or for the script that you want to be able to call from anywhere. So that's the path variable. Hopefully this video is a little bit helpful and uh, feel free to comment here in the forum uh, with any questions, happy to chat this further.